Oh, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Hold no, on. no, no, no. But it's nice to see you. I'm, so, you know, is everything set up now? Yeah, I think so. That's great. Sorry uh, about that, Will. No, no, it's, it's perfect. It's uh, it's a professional at work. It's uh, <laughs> it's nice to see. So look, um, today I wanted to to turn the tables a little bit. Um, I think the last couple of uh, sessions you've been you've been buzzing me with questions, uh, and I wanted to pick on your your favourite topic, which is. Which I think is is one we're probably going to be talking about again for a while. But the Fed? Um, no, no, no. Oh, well, sorry. We might come to the Fed, but I think this is this is sort of the reopening. And the way I wanted to frame today's discussion was, um, you know, coming coming into COVID, we saw a surge in the performance of the stay at home name. So that sort of home delivery, Zoom, uh, Netflix, the, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yep. Sort yep. Of, and and we've been talking for a while about the concept of uh, the end of COVID, which I still continue to believe will will be the case. I'll tell myself that every day. But this concept of reopening trade, which is a return to, to normality. And, and and how is that going to play out? How should investors think about that from um, from the names that they're in today that might uh, might sort of revert to normal, as in the, the outperformers? Might some of those, the Pelotons, the Zooms, might they start to, to normalize? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Or do we think we're in a new normal? And 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 the sort of the third element of that is the companies that have been overlooked because we stay at home. So the experience, the sort of the Disney worlds, uh, the cinemas, uh, not with notwithstanding some of the the meme stocks which we chatted about. But how do you see this playing out? I mean, without picking a date because I know that's impossible and they mm-hmm. keep moving. But but as we move beyond COVID, as we start to see people leaving their houses, which we're starting to see today in the West um, and in parts of Asia. How do you see that playing out? And what names would you be, sort of sectors would be, you be looking at? What names would you be worried about as having overperformed or overachieved? Um, yeah, what are your views on, on reopening? Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I think it's the reopening trade is, um, is a fascinating one because you, it, at the beginning of the lockdown, I think everybody was, there was a lot of things that were happening, right? So if we take sectors specifically, if you look at some of the financials, Right, globally, um, a lot of them were slightly concerned that you'd have huge write downs from loans, so they were holding loan provisions. Right, a lot of those didn't come to fruition as we've seen over the past couple of months. Um, so that tells that, that that tells me one that tells me a couple of things. Firstly, is that the COVID or the pandemic or the lockdown itself wasn't as bad for corporations and the economy, more so in the U.S. than it was uh, than was potentially anticipated. Supply chains were a huge hugely disrupted right i mean yep. taking taking the suez canal issue out of that but, but the supply chains were all taken offline mm-hmm. and having these supply chains come back into lo- coming with back online lag. with a lag and a huge demand from the public because they were wanted to they wanted to basically just get out and do things um created a little bit of a bottleneck um but you're right there are a handful of i i i was i was uh, last year, I was uh, invested into some of the stay at homes, right? So Peloton, Netflix, and then I kind of recognized, okay, I've either come, I've either become uh, just sick of staying at home and watching Netflix and binging and riding a Peloton bike uh, that I had to get out. Riding a Peloton while watching Netflix and ordering home deliveries, I love it. Um, and I think that was, you know, we we had that huge, there was a huge upswing, right? Because everybody started to recognize, oh my God, the market is, we really aren't going to come out of this in, in three months time or four months time. Um, but I think now we've started to see, at least in the in the States, and I know I always refer back to the States, but I think you've seen the States, um, the end of the lockdown or the end of the restrictions, we saw that over the first three to four months of this year or the past three to four months of this year, right? The Europe Europe has lagged, I would say, um, arguably that that has lagged a little bit. But now we've seen in the last couple of weeks, we've seen the numbers uh, for Europe um, um, surpass the the, the pre COVID numbers. So, so so that gives me an indication. It's kind of a wave, right? The U S had it. Um, there was a big reopening trade, and then you see Europe now starting to catch up with that. So, so picking up on that. Um you know, I know you're a big, uh, big um, exponent of, of financials, and um, and particularly U.S., which I think has been a tremendous trade over the last yep. uh, investment over the last 12, 12 to eighteen months. But um, notwithstanding the, the drawdown in last March, but um, how much of this is lagged? So we, we're talking about, you know, e- equity investment is all about seeing the future, predicting the future, trying to assume um, the, the 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 sort of the future cash flows of mm. a business and its growth, etc. Which is why I guess we find it fascinating. But um, if if I look at 
the US financials specifically and the, the non-performing loans and the writing back of their balance sheets. Um, if I think about about the sort of the reopening, we are about to go through sort of sequentially in the West, we're going to go through a sort of an end of stimulus or at least a reduction of stimulus. So we think today, mm -hmm. as we sit mm -hmm. here today, it looks like the furlough schemes and the, and the sort of stipend checks to stay at home are going to be rolling off as is some of the support for businesses. So in the UK, the C-Bill program, these are going to start to roll off. Yep. So how much of the, the sort of bad loan provisions do you think that we're writing back now, we might see in the next two, three, four quarters actually being written down again as as some of the defaults start to come online from the businesses that have been propped up fair art point. artificially? Do yeah. you think that's a risk or do you think actually we're, the banks are, are seeing through that and that this is this is a great time, still a great time to get invested in, in, in banks? Sort of question one. You'll know I love my multi-questions. And the second thing is, if I was to look at Europe versus the US, is it is it your view that the US has sort of had its reopening bounce and actually we should be looking at some of the names that have performed well in the US and looking at their equivalent in Europe as a as a place to be invested next because that's a very good guideline mm. for what might happen in, in Europe and therefore perhaps underweight the US versus Europe in this specific moment in time. Yeah, I think I, I, to, to answer it in, 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 in a reverse order, I think, I think there will be a bit of a catch-up trade for Europe. Um, uh, Europe has has been lagging for a while, and I think you'll see Europe catch up over the next few months. I think the U.S. has kind of had their moment. I wouldn't discount the U.S. I think the U.S. is going to continue to grow, right, because it's just it's such a big market. Uh, but And I think you just – I wouldn't be underweight the U.S. I'd probably be equal at the U.S. and overweight Europe, at least for the next three months, because I think there is – there is a little bit of a there is a little bit of a catch up trade going, and if anybody has read my two shillings, um, that goes out on I Fridays. Love that, by the way. Uh, love thank that, you, by thank the you, way. thank you. Um, so, uh, so, so that's kind of the, la the, the 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 second question. The first question was more about: um, Do I think that potentially some of the loan provisions have been? There's a little bit of an early celebration, right? Um, because. These we've companies, <laughs> yeah, we've su survived thus far, and I think you're right. I think there is there's potentially going to be some of that, right? But if you look at the unemployment numbers and you look at the you look at the jobs that are available versus the jobs that are being filled, that gives you an indication that there's a lag, right? There, there's definitely jobs that are out there, and maybe that maybe that shift takes a couple of months when when people are coming back off of furlough or these stimulus checks are stopping or running out at the end of the summer. So I would look to September, October, November to see, to look at some of those loan provisions and if they are coming back from some of these companies that are hitting the wall or, or, or basically doing right down. So you're right. It's, it's not, we're not, we're not in, we're not in the clear yet. Right. And I think the one thing that I keep coming back to is this is just going to be the normal course of life from now on, right? Whether or not it gets extreme, whether we get different variants, I think COVID is here to stay. I don't think it's going away. I think what we're trying to do now is figure out how we manage with it. Um, and we don't have a huge shock where the world shuts down for whatever it is, 12, 13, 14 months on end, which is, which I'm hugely surprised that the restart of the economies has done so well, um, given that the world was basically shut down for 12 months so i mean and to pick on uh to pick on the sort of the new normal one of the sectors that's been devastated um probably the single biggest hit sector i guess is the airline and tourism business mm. to, or two sectors that lump them together um there are stories out today that there's uh um over the last week there's stories out of around the creation of a, a new airline uh in europe um to, to sort of yeah, exactly. So, um, so, so what I was wondering was, you know, what do you think in this reopening world? What does travel look like? What is what does travel internationally? What does travel domestically look like? And what was that? What would you do in terms of uh, the travel sector and airlines um, for investments? Is it is it this is a great time to, to pile in because everybody's become unbelievably depressed and actually you can buy some of these companies on great valuations, or is it stay? stay the hell away because it's just mm. way too early to tell or is it look at pure play domestic so US domas domestic travel is going to be huge because people are going to be confined to yeah. sort of the, the, the four borders as it were of the US how do you think about that? Um, I'm not a huge well, I'm not, not a huge a, holiday I, I'm, I'm, I, love, I love my holidays but I'm not a huge I'm not a huge airline fan yeah. in terms of an investor um, and also cruise lines Give me the heebie-jeebies. I just couldn't imagine going on a cruise, to be honest. I love, it's a good thing, though, right? You invest in companies in which you like the products. I, I just, yeah, yeah, for me, yeah. I don't, yeah. like RCL, I, I just don't do it. But 
there is there is a segment of the market that is gagging to get back onto a cruise line, right? That, that is a fact, and they just love it. Um, there is an even bigger segment of the market that wants to get out of their home and out of their towns or their cities and go somewhere else. So I think airlines themselves, I think we'll see a bit of a bump, right? Of course you will, because air traffic will pick up. Some of these planes will be have to put back, uh, will be brought back online. You've already seen some of the big U.S. airlines putting in huge orders. I mean, monster, monster orders for planes um, for for the next uh, five to ten years. So I don't think. I mean, I don't think travel is going to die, right? I think we're we'll, we'll just get back to it. I think the norm will continue to be, you know. Use caution, use common sense when you're traveling, and I think people will just get on with life. Okay, great. Well, look, I think um, this is fascinating. Um, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how this plays out over the next three to six months yeah. as people do reopen. Do we start working from home? Does Zoom stay at the price it is? Yeah. Um, do Pelotons and pizzas still ride, or do we want to get out and, and sort of and go and see local life? But whichever way it goes, it's been, as always, a fascinating discussion, and uh, appreciate your time. Thank you, Will. Thank you.